When I went into the theater to see the Emoji Movie, my expectations were low. Pretty much everyone predicted it would suck, that there would be nothing good about it whatsoever. But I could never prepare for what I was presented with. It was even worse than anybody had feared. After shamefully purchasing my ticket to hell, I got a drink and walked into the theater. 20 minutes before showtime, and the theater was barren, completely empty. I was, at that moment, the only person watching said showing. It took about three minutes for a wave of deep regret to hit me. I, a fully functioning human being, had just spent actual money on this film. And now that I've seen this garbage fire, I wish I had pirated it. A few minutes later, two families walked in. The children here varied in age between three and seven. They will be important later. The movie opens with T.J. Miller going on about the world inside your phone. He describes how each app has its own world. <clears throat> then the journey into madness begins. The titular character, Gene, is dealing with a crisis of, of his identity. Sorry. An emoji who is able to emote more than the meh face. Rather than using this ability to put half the emoji database out of their jobs and crash the economy, he shoddily hides it. He then walks to work in an abyssal walk sequence in which these horrible jokes ensue. He talks to the shrimp emoji who says he will throw himself on the barbie in Australian accent. The shrimp emoji then gets in a cocktail themed car and drives away. He asks a clock what time it is, to which the clock replies, my eyes are up here. He runs into some 2009-esque emoticons, you know, colon, parenthesis, smiley face, stating how he hates running into the elderly. One of these emoticons says, ow, my colon. This is the worst joke in the entire film. After this creatively brain-dead sequence is ended, Gene arrives at this big gold building that's never mentioned by name, in which the emojis sit in a cube and are scanned to the text. His father and mother approach him, and his dad says he doesn't want Gene working today. Gene somehow convinces his parents to let him work, and takes his place in the box thing. We are then introduced to the Smiler character, who uses her elevated sass to run the whole thing. She is somewhat tolerable. The next character we meet, however, is not. High Five is, by far, the absolute worst character in this film. Mainly in the fact that he contributes absolutely nothing to the plot. I can make an edit of the movie that removed all the scenes containing this five-finger menace, and the film's plot would remain entirely the same. <clears throat> Gene basically runs into the Hand Devil, and it turns out that the Hand Devil isn't allowed into the VIP club anymore because he was replaced by a fist bump. Gene proceeds to enter his cube, and the real horror begins. The phone user, some 15-year-old kid who likes his girl or something, decides to reply to the girl's text with a meh. I have no idea why he would respond to a message from his love interest with a meh, but that's not important right now. Gene panics and screws the whole thing up, severely damaging the cube unit. Smiler gathers her advisors to discuss what to do with the malfunction. This is exactly like Divergent. Gene sits atop the still unnamed golden building, likely contemplating suicide. His parents walk out with his mother saying that he should hide in the apartment for his own good. Congratulations, Gene's parents have the same flaws as Buck Cluck now. Eventually, Gene is called in and informed of his execution. Smiler pulls out a dental floss noose, which hovers around his face for a good three seconds. At this rate, I am actively rooting for the public hanging of this emoji. But Gene runs out and the Hand Devil is back, oh my god! The Hand Devil introduces Gene to the Loser Lounge, in which emoji who are not used reside. This cast includes some elderly woman, an eggplant, a depressed broom, and a disco ball who's already hung himself. Gene is then like, oh god, I screwed this up, what do I do? And then the hand double's like, oh, you gotta find a hacker and get good, so the two escape some death robot things and exit town through a highway that the bots clearly should have seen. It's not until Gene's horrible parents walk down this alley do the bots follow. Upon leaving this loser lounge, High Five says bye Felicia to this elderly woman, effectively making High Five a worse character than he already is. The Hand Devil leads Gene to a piracy app that skin is a dictionary for some reason. This kid knows how to use a phone. Inside, we're introduced to an array of misguided jokes leading to reveal of the hacker. The bots go in the app and start killing people left and right, none of which are the Hand Devil, sadly. The hacker eventually then gets out of there and into Candy Crush. Yes, Candy Crush. 
That thing your parents played once in 2010 and never touched again. This is not good at all. Gene gets stuck in the candy board thing, and the this isn't wild style, I swear, hacker gets him out. The hand devil eats random candy as he goes on. Just a reminder, the only reason he's here is because he wants to remove the fist bump from the phone source cord and be the favorite again. <sighs> Congratulations, the hand emoji is now a Trump sympathizer. After leaving the horribly outdated game, they take a shortcut through some flashy ones and zeros. You know, the film's rating scores. But, um, pssst. After said filler, in which Hand Devil does more pointless things, they just land in Just Dance. Yes, that's a real app. Where Christina Aguilarity hosts a life and death uh, dance sequence to progress them. It's, it's really stupid, I know. This allows Gene to dance and say some stuff and kind of develop the hacker character, but not really. Hand Devil dances in the background this entire time because he has no better reason to be there other than to wipe out the person who replaced him and make the phone great again. The bots find the dance app and make it go off, effectively disturbing Alex's history class. Alex deletes the Just Dance app, allowing for one of the bots to take Hand Devil to the trash where he belongs. Thank God for the bot, he is my hero. Also, Christina Aguilera, Aguilera, sorry, I cannot talk today. Yes, she's in this movie. She plays some anime girl who does Just Dance, and she dies. She dies in the garbage can. Alright, in this sequence, they reveal that the hacker is like a princess emoji who left because generals or something. I don't know. I don't care. So her and Jean have to go save the hand. No, please don't save the hand. And there's a romance thing, but not really because it ends. So they get the hand man from the trash and leave and take Jean to the firewall. Gene is severely burnt before they let him in because ha 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 firewall, right? No. So they're up in the cloud in which a hacker friend zones Gene. He's then kidnapped by the bot and taken to Smiler for his well-deserved public hanging. The hand is like, we gotta save him, then hacker whistles, summoning the Twitter bird, further proving my theory that the High Five is a member of the alt-right. So one deus ex machina later and they shut down the bot and kill the smiley one. Oh, and Gene's status the same defect. But it doesn't matter anymore because the movie's practically over at this rate. It's only 80 minutes long. So Gene somehow sends a multi-expressional emoji that somehow just seduces the girl that Alex wants. And yay, it's done. Can we leave now? But anyway, the whole thing ends with dancing. That's it. No more. And if you were going to go see this movie because Patrick Stewart was in it, he only has like six lines. He's not really in it at all. This movie isn't meant to entertain your kids. It's not meant to teach them a lesson. It's made to sell apps. Your kids won't get anything out of this but, but a desire to play Just Dance. Hide your iTunes password. In fact, one of the children I mentioned earlier said about halfway through, this is a very long movie. And he's right. This is basically an 80-minute advertisement. The characters are bland. The setting is uninspired. The plot is a horrid mismatch of many other films. The Emoji Movie tries to be many things, but does none of them at all. Uh, well, at all, you know, what, you know what I'm trying to say here is this movie was terrible. It was just pandering to the lowest common denominator audience that would eat this up because it had a poop emoji. And when they're not entertained, when they say this is a long movie and they want to go home, then you failed. There's under, there's undertones here about like, oh, you should have real friends instead of Facebook friends. Or, hey, one of the emojis is a feminist. But your kids aren't going to care about that. They're not going to care about the feminist emoji or the Facebook allegory. They want to play Just Dance and you just... Uh, this movie is horrible. In short, do not see this film. Do not take your children to see this film. Do not do anything to benefit Sony. Pirate it in a couple months or wait for the inevitable I Hate Everything review because you know that this thing's going to be on search for the worst. Mark my words. And one last note. What kind of person schedules a phone store appointment to wipe their data from the phone? You can do that in settings. I could do that right now if I wanted to. In fact, I want to erase any data of this movie from my meme, uh, meme memory, whatever. I can't talk because this is so horrible. I hate this movie. I hate my life. I want to die.